everyone. Welcome to Cooking and Conversations, an event in support of Off Their Plate to provide economic relief to local restaurants while fueling our frontline healthcare heroes in honor of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. My name is Karen Fukuhara. Uh, I am in the Boys and Suicide Squad and I'll be your um, moderator for today. We have a special guest host, New York Times bestseller, culinary advisor to Serious Eats, Chef Kenji Lopez Alt. Hey, Karen, how's it going? Hi. And hey, everyone else watching. Yes, hi. I'm excited to be cooking with you today. Me too. Uh, we always watch your videos, so. Um, oh, good. <laughs> and we're joined today by three amazing AAPI women in media, including model, TV personality, Entrepreneur, entrepreneur, and founder of Sweat the Style, Adrian Ho. YouTube sensation, host of original podcast, Fish Cheese, Olivia Sway. Um, actress, singer, and star of The Terror, Mickey Ishikawa. Hi guys, um, today we'll be sharing our personal experiences as Asian Americans in food and media and specific challenges that we and our communities have faced during COVID-19. Thank you all for joining us. Yay. Um, to start off, Chef Kenji, um, I know you've been partnering up with OTP since uh, early in their inception. Um, yeah. Can you kind of talk about the organization and how you've been involved? Yeah, so the organization, um, they started in Boston. Um, I, found out, I found out about it through my old friend, um, my old chef, uh, Ken Oranger, who has been working with them since the start. Um, uh, you know, I was, our restaurant was closed down um, pretty much completely. And so we were, you know, and then we were sitting on all this food in our walk-in that we couldn't serve anyone. And so I started just making it into meals, um, thinking I could find a home for them. Uh, and so I reached out through social media, asking people to know anywhere that needed food, and OTP reached out to me pretty immediately um, through my old chef Ken. And uh, they said they were, you know, they were just starting. I think they were they'd been around for a week at that point, um, operating only in Boston, and they were trying to expand to other cities. Uh, and so we became one of their first partners um, in a non-Boston city. Um, and so what they do is they helped us uh, connect with both donors who buy meals and then uh, hospitals and other, other, other places that need the food. So they, they sort of act as a, a liaison to help people help each other. Um, so you know, it, it, it's allowed us to keep at least part of our staff employed uh, throughout this entire thing, um, and also for us to provide, well at this point we're, this week we're going to provide um, our 5,000 uh, free meal. And I think uh, overall OTP across the country um, has now provided um, over 100,000 if, if I'm right about that one. Um, I'll have to look at the exact number, but it's, it's around there. Um, so um, yeah, they're, they're doing wonderful work and raising money and awareness and really legitimately helping people. Wow, that's so awesome that you, you're doing all of this. I mean, I, I donated meals with OTP, um, I think a couple weeks ago, and the restaurant owner of Kobunga, who we were delivering with, um, was telling me that you know, without OTP, it would have been very difficult to uh, pay his employees. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's 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 wonderful. It's you know, a hundred percent of your money. OTP is all all um, volunteer based. So, a hundred percent of the money goes literally to feeding people um, who are putting their lives at risk to keep us help, to keep us healthy and to do the research needed to help um, you know to help fight this virus right now. Um, going to that and to helping the restaurants, help, helping restaurant workers keep a job. Um, so it's, I, I can't think of, um, there, there are not that many organizations where your money is all going to good places. Um, and this one, this is one of them. Uh, no, you, you said it, you said it. Um, all right. So to kick us off, let's start with a speed round of intros. I think we kind of, we got deep real quick, but, uh, let's backtrack and do a speed round of intros and zoom icebreaker. Everyone, if you could um, tell uh, tell our viewers uh, where you are now and um, the first restaurant you want to eat at after quarantine. Um, I'll start and then I'll designate. Uh, I would love to eat sushi. I, I 
would love to eat sushi. Some uh, one of my favorite restaurants is Masakazu, but they're closed, I think, right now. So um, I'll have to go back when um, we're back. Also, because my palate leans towards the Asian cuisine, I feel like I've only been cooking stir fry and Asian food. So I would love to eat uh, Lomo Saltado from Mario's Peruvian. Oh. Anyone know? Oh, Olivia. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. French fries and like gravy and meat. Hell yes. Amazing. It's like one of my favorites. So uh, those two. Um, Chef Kenji. Um, so, well, I'm, I'm at home right now and, um, we, you know, we've been doing some takeout, but, um, we're, our, our area is opening up for parcel restaurant service starting next week. Um, actually starting, uh, tomorrow, Monday. Um, uh, the first restaurant I want to eat at is my own, like, I want to go back to my restaurant when there's guests there and I want to see, I want to see people enjoying themselves there again. You know, it's not, it's not going to be the same as it was, you know, cause we used to be packed shoulder to shoulder, which is like worst case scenario for a virus, but. Um, but you know, we are going to be seating to a limited capacity and I know people are already looking forward to coming back. And so I'm, I'm really excited to see, um, people back in there and seeing families enjoying themselves. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, and, and I guess having a bit of good food while I'm there too. Are you, are you, uh, sheltering in place in SF? Uh, I mean, San Mateo. Yeah. Yeah. So a little south, a little south of San Francisco. Yeah. Uh, Adrian? Um, I am in Los Angeles right now. I'm at my place in Silver Lake. Uh, I guess when the whole virus thing is over, I would love to get hot pot um, out loud because it's just such a fun experience. It's like everyone's sharing. That, know, that was my last meal before shelter in place. <laughs> my last meal before shelter in place too. <laughs> and uh, it's not a good condition for, for viruses, but when this is over, it will be fun to kind of like share food, cook together. Um, I just love that interactive feeling of, of like of eating and having fun. Yeah. That sounds awesome. Like that, I didn't even think about that, but that it would be great. Also Korean barbecue would be awesome. Oh, yes. Korean barbecue, yes. Olivia? Um, okay. I love hot pot. Heidi Lau is hands down the place I'm going to after this. I know it's going to be so hot outside. I don't care. I'm going to get myself to a Chinese hot pot restaurant with my friends and my family. It's, I, I, I'm like dreaming about it. Drooling. Drooling about it. Yeah, drooling <laughs> about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the emoji is like, um, Mickey, where would you love to go? Um, so I'm based in LA right now, and um, I know I've been cooking so much Asian food as well, specifically. We have seen it on your Instagram. It looks good. Um, but I have been trying to take out, obviously, as well as from specific Asian-owned restaurants. But to a dining experience, I love Osawa in Pasadena for I'm also craving sushi. Um, it would be amazing to sit at a counter and be able to have that exchange. But yes, hot pot, Korean barbecue, all, all the sharing stuff once viruses are somewhat disappeared. I don't know if we have that perfect. But yes, I would love to be able to have that experience with everyone again. You know, I miss human interaction so much. <laughs> so much. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, so before we begin, I do have some special announcements for everyone. Um, firstly, everyone who RSVP'd uh, on our evites, 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 uh, will, was automatically entered in a raffle to win a custom piece of art by New York City illustrator and advocate for small businesses, Felicia Liang. Um, you can check out her work on Instagram at the F Liang, L-I-A-N-G. Um, and after this cooking show, OTP will reach out to you if you want. Second, a special thank you to La Colombe uh, for supporting this event. All who RSVP'd again to the event will receive a promo code for purchasing their products online. Um, and if you haven't done, done so already, you can still do that till the end of day today. So. Uh, um, get your promo code, get your coffee. Lastly, um, please consider donating 
below. I'm going to keep saying this during this video. Um, 100% of the proceeds, like Chef Kenji said, goes towards our frontline community. So um, let's help each other out. Um, and now on to the cooking. Um, we sent a recipe to everyone beforehand, but if you haven't seen that this week, uh, or if you haven't received that already, OTP will have the recipe up on their Instagram. So check that out. Um, and we're, we're going to only like loosely follow it, by the way, <laughs> as, oh. as I normally do when I cook. Um, I mean, you can follow it as closely as you want, but um, um, but I, and I think we're all sort of we all sort of have different equipment, and we all have sort of slightly different ingredients. Um, but we'll we'll go from there. I'm going to stick a camera on my head just so that well, so that so that I look dumb. But we don't see your face usually. This is <laughs> yeah. so funny. how did you come up with that idea? And I mean, my friends, it's funny because uh, a few of my guy friends texted me after I posted the Instagram, uh, uh -huh. you know, advertising this. And I thought they were going to comment on the beautiful ladies that are <laughs> with me on this. And they were like, Chef Kenji, <laughs> a beautiful workflow. So, um, yeah, no, how did you come up with that? And Well, so, well, first of all, I'm going to start peeling shrimp. But if, well, yeah. if, you guys, if, if, any, if you guys, I know some of you have shrimp, some of you have tofu. Um, if you have shrimp, you can start peeling them um, and just get them into a little bowl. Well, if you have tofu, then you can just cut it into um, little, uh, little, little cubes, like uh, maybe – you know, half inch by one inch cubes. Um, but you know, the way I came up with this, I was, was like, I don't know, like most good ideas. I was, I was drunk one night and I thought I was about to cook myself like a midnight snack. And I was like, I want, I, there was a GoPro sitting there. So I was like, I wonder what, what it would look like if I stuck a GoPro on my head while I, while I cooked. Um, and so I did that and then I just stuck the video on my YouTube channel. Um, and then I kind of did that on and off on my YouTube channel. Uh, for for a few years without really paying attention to whether people were watching it or not, um, and then a few months ago, I looked at back at one of my videos. Like, oh, this video has like six million views. People like, I guess people, it's just like making a grilled cheese sandwich. Um, uh, so yeah, it just seemed like a fun thing to continue doing, um, and it's it, it you know it works for me because it's like I I'm used to doing like kind of live demos and talking while I cook, so I can just do the exact same thing. So it's like very low production costs and. Um, and I think it's a unique way to, a unique way to present things. Um, so yeah, I don't know, works for me. Um, wait, so who of you has shrimp and who of you has tofu? Yeah. Tofu. Shrimp, okay. I have shrimp. And shrimp, cool, cool, all right. So, so thank you, shrimp. Noodles. Is there a title for the dish? Chef oh, yeah, yeah, so we're making like a, we're making like a, um, a, a Thai basil pesto. Um, so it'll be a bunch of different herbs, peanuts. Um, uh, we're going to be serving with shrimp and, and green beans. Um, you, can be, you, know, you can do it with any kind of green vegetable, peas, snap peas, green beans. Actually, I'm using long beans. Um, and then noodles. Um, and so it's sort of like a hybrid between a, uh, like a Thai-style curry paste, which is basically the base that we're going to start with. Um, and then we're going to finish it off more like an Italian-style pesto where we toss it with, pasta, with, the, with the noodles and the pasta water to get it into like a creamy emulsion. Um, so the shrimp, you want to take them and add about... Um, quarter teaspoon of baking soda to them. Um, and what that does is that um, it actually cha it changes the structure of the meat so that as it, as it cooks, it, um, it, releases, it reduces, releases less moisture as it cooks, so it stays, the shrimp stay kind of plumper. So if, if you've ever been to like a, like a dim sum place and had those like the crystal dumplings um, and the shrimp are kind of like, super, like kind of almost like crunch inside, they like kind of pop, um, that's how they do it with, with a little bit of baking soda. Um, so about a quarter teaspoon of baking soda for a half pound of shrimp, um, and then about a teaspoon cornstarch, um, and a big pinch of kosher salt. That salt is also going to kind of help them retain moisture. Um, and then a little drizzle of oil, probably about a teaspoon or so of vegetable oil as well. Um, and then we just want to kind of uh, toss that all together until the shrimp are kind of evenly coated in the in a, in a paste. Did everyone have an easy time getting all the ingredients? Was that okay? I didn't find basil. I went to the Korean market and they had no regular basil, no Thai basil. So unfortunately, I didn't 
Yeah, yeah I'm I'm using just regular Italian basil actually because I didn't I couldn't find the they were out of the, they were out of the um, Thai basil at the Chinese market yesterday. But honestly, like this kind of recipe, it's super forgiving. Like you don't really need the exact you know as long as you have like a good selection of fresh herbs. Um, it's it's really more a technique than like an exact recipe. Um, so now if, if you have um, beans. Um, if you have beans, you want to cut those into kind of bite-sized pieces. Is it okay that I don't have beans? It's totally fine if you don't have beans. Um, yeah, I just want to trim off the ends and cut them into bite-sized pieces. So this, you know, beans are actually, um, string beans are actually a, a, a traditional ingredient in um, Italian, you know, in Ligurian pesto as well. Um, so, so traditionally with Ligurian, Ligurian pesto, the kind, of, you know, the kind we're all familiar with, you would have um, string beans, and potato chunks in there, um, but we're going to do we're going to do beans and um, shrimp instead. Can be for the noodles, right? Say again. The, the beans will be be cooked with the with the um, shrimp. Before. Yeah, we'll we'll cook. I mean, they're going to cook for like about a minute. So we're, we'll get our we'll get all our we'll, we'll get all our pesto or our sauce ready, um, and then the beans and shrimp or beans and tofu can cook together. Um, and then and then we'll take them out and then we'll cook the noodles. So everything will cook in the same pot of water. You just need one pot of boiling water for this. I mean, you guys you guys can tell me when you're ready to go on. I don't want to don't want to rush anyone. I am just going to cut these green beans. Olivia, how are you doing? I'm 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 good. I'm yeah. ready to go. Olivia, who's your cat? Oh oh oh! It's it's my little puppy. Oh, it's a puppy. Okay. Yeah. Her I, name I just saw. It. Tail wagging, like walking by behind you. I know. Um, she, her name is Grizzy, and oh, nice. three months almost, and she will be joining us. Amazing. Yeah. She's awesome. Did you get Grizzy during quarantine? I know a lot of people were. Yeah, it was a foster fail. Actually, we were fostering her, and then, like, a bunch of people wanted to adopt her, but then, you know, we were so heartbroken to give her away. So we were just like, you know what, we're gonna. We're gonna be her parents. That's amazing. I, I really wanted to foster, but um, uh, allergies got in the way. And um, yeah, props to you because that's you know so much. I care about the cat, so it's kind of a um, a new new thing trying to care for an animal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's see. The light went out. Uh oh. It's okay. It'll come back on. Oh, there it is. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You guys ready? Yes. All right. Yes. So now uh, I'm going to take. Um, so we're going to take three ingredients and we're going to smash them in a mortar and pestle. Um, and if you don't have a mortar and pestle, that's fine. Um, for, so I'll, I'll tell you what to do if you don't have a mortar and pestle first. But first, everyone can take their garlic um, and just cut off the very bottoms of them, like the little sprout end. Um, sorry, the, the, you know the part the part that's connected at the bottom. You want to just just cut that off, um, and then take your garlic cloves, um, put them under your knife, and just like really smash it hard, like that. Um, and when you do that, it should make it really easy to then just pick the peels out. Pro tips. <laughs> and I so now, if you do have a mortar and pestle, um, you can then just transfer that all straight into the mortar and pestle. And if you don't, you can just um, kind of, you know, like do like a little rock chop and just finely, finely mince it up, and then put it into a little bowl on the side. Is it okay that my mortar and pestle is very small? Very small? Yeah. Um, yeah, that'll work. You just have, you just have to, you just have to do a couple batches, or, or you can make a small amount, or yeah, that'll, that'll be fine. Um, and then you want to take uh, ginger, so we're going to use like a little chunk of ginger, like about, you know, it's going to end up being about a tablespoon or so. Um, and, and ginger, I find it easiest to peel with a spoon, so you just take a spoon and you kind of rub it across the skin, and the skin should come right off. Mickey, how has it been in the entertainment industry? Um, I know that productions were shut down but um have you seen the covid covid impact uh so 
it's been an interesting, uh, I, I don't even, how many months are we in? I don't even know. Um, but it's been interesting to see just because obviously yeah, production started shutting down and um, there's so much speculation as to when we can go back to, you know, work and to sets and as being an actor and, you know, we're most going to be, we're going to be the most vulnerable since we're in front of the cameras and we can't wear anything um, to protect us. So, and obviously there's all these different game plans, but nothing is really moving yet. I've heard so many different, you know, times of when we'd be going back, but I think until we can really ensure the safety of um, the crew, because everyone is so vital and indispensable, and I think everyone's just wanting to make sure that we can all be safe before we can all be together again. Um, but, you know, aside from that, I think additionally, we've, it's just been so amazing to see how important culture and media and art is, because we've all been able to kind of binge everything right now, I'm taking advantage of binging my friend shows like yours, the boys, I love it and um yeah we just see you know what would we have done without music and um uh, film and tv and you know everything right now and books if we you know those things how important it is so as artists i think we're able to see how vital we are and hopefully you know we can take advantage of um continuing to create more art um as soon as this is kind of all over or if you're doing it during quarantine <laughs> but yeah, I think everyone just wants to get back to work, but we all want to be safe together. I second you on that for sure. Um, Adrian, I wanted to ask this, doesn't have to do with being Asian American, I guess, but um, I know that you're super into sportswear. I was wondering if um, you were always into sportswear and then modeling kind of found you because of the sportswear or uh, you were inspired by the brands you were working with? Um, I mean, once I started modeling, I had to get into fitness to stay in shape and all that kind of stuff. And um, so I got really into fitness and then that just kind of became a natural progression for me because I would be like, I was in New York, I was running around, going to meetings, going to shoots, and I kind of would incorporate sportswear in what I was wearing. So it became like part of my, um, you know, my style and that's kind of where everything started from there. And it's comfortable going to set, I'm sure. <laughs> and you look fly. <laughs> You'll have to teach um, all of us. I know that Mickey has her own home gym in her garage. Um, some good booty workouts or something. I've been I mean, craving. Hopefully after this quarantine, we need some, we need some booty workouts. <laughs> Absolutely. Got some weights going. <laughs> um, and then I wanted to ask Olivia a question. Um, yes. So I think, like you said earlier about the YouTube being a platform and a, a, a way for Asian Americans um, to kind of be seen, to be given representation because it was lacking in mainstream media. Um, how has the YouTube community been? I think you guys are really tight knit, very close, right? Um, yeah, the YouTube community is very tight knit. Um, growing up, I watched this YouTube channel called Wong Fu Productions, and um, they're they've been doing this for like twelve years now. And they have really formed an amazing community in LA for Asian actors and Asian actresses. And a lot of us have been on their videos and been in their videos. So um, they formed a really awesome community. And Phil is like a mentor brother to me that I can always go to and talk to him about my problems and my struggles. Um, so in that sense, it's such a beautiful world that they have created and even within my own um sketch smosh we are really tight-knit committed uh family as well they're like my brothers and sisters and we talk almost every single day and um we were casted to be best friends on screen but actually we really became like more than that we became brothers and sisters and um yeah so i love those people i love you guys <laughs> We have to all catch up for drinks or something when this is all over. It seems like we're all in California. So yeah, yeah that would be fun. What are we doing, Chef Kenji? Oh yeah, so you're, you're taking your peeled ginger um, and you want to kind of slice it against the grain into, you know, 
it's relatively thin, you know, like part of sort of like a stack of like three quarters or so, like a, um, you want to slice it against the grain, then you want to do the same thing you did to the garlic. So just put it down and just whack it really hard um, to kind of break it up with the side of your knife. Um, and then you can kind of roughly chop it. And if you have a mortar and pestle, stick it in the mortar and pestle. And if you don't, then just um, really finely mince it. Um, and then finally after that, um, we're gonna uh, do the same thing with the chili. So I have a, you, I have a Serrano chili because um, I couldn't find Thai bird chilies. Um, but you can use any kind of chili really and, and, and make it as hot or as not hot as you want. Um, so I'm gonna use one whole Serrano chili in here. Um, and that one I'm just going to also just kind of roughly chop and stick into the mortar and pestle. Um, and again, if you don't have a mortar and pestle, then you can more finely chop it. Um, is there anyone who doesn't have, who, does everyone have either a mortar and pestle or a food processor or a blender? A blender. You have a blender. Okay, so your so yours. What well, we'll do yours a little bit differently. So what we'll do with yours is we'll add all the ingredients to the blend. Like you can chop everything and then put it in the blender. Um, and then at the end, what we'll do is after we cook the pasta, we'll blend it all with a little bit of the pasta water because um, that'll help it kind of like move around in the blender. Um, but everyone else, you can just put it in the mortar and pestle. Can you try it on the way while we're doing? Say again. Can you be grinding it a little bit, like, as each uh, well, once So once you get the garlic, ginger, and chilies in there, um, you can add, like, a, a pinch of, of uh, coarse salt. Um, and then you can start kind of pounding it. Yeah, you, you don't have to pound really too hard here. Um, really what you want to do is just kind of, like, smear it against the inside of the mortar and pestle. That's how you're going to kind of really break things down. Um, it's, it's, it's less force, and it's more kind of kind of like a smearing motion. I have a question. If my yeah. chili is tiny like this, because I yeah. got a high chili, yeah. um, do I use two or do I just use one? They're really hot, so it depends on how hot you like I'll things. Just, I'll just use one. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> Are you hot things, Olivia? What? Do you need spicy things? I love spicy food, but I don't think I can handle it. I feel like my eyes are on fire. <laughs> Um, so the mortar and pestle, I know Karen, you were saying how you, you, had, you, you did, you did this in, in advance and how you were going to trade out your mortar and pestle for a food processor. Um, but there, there's actually like a pretty big difference between what a food processor does and what a mortar and pestle does. Um, because a, you know, food processor kind of has like, has whirling blades. So it's like, so if you imagine like your plant is like it, your plant cells as like a stack of sponges that have juice in them, you know, and then there's this like flavorful juice that you want to get out. So like if you have like a whirling blade, you, you can kind of you're kind of slicing between them and knocking them around and moving them over, so you're kind of shearing cells apart, but you're not necessarily like getting all that juice out. Um, whereas if you if you pound when you pound in a mortar and pestle, it's kind of like um, you know. So I, I think of it as like um, like like a stack of shipping containers, you know, like at a, at a shipyard. Um, <laughs> that's a delivery at the door. Um, a stack of shipping containers and like. Um, a, 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 a food processor is like a hurricane went through and knocked the containers over and just kind of banged them around. Whereas mortar and pestle is like, is like Godzilla came and like stomped on them and crushed all the contents out. So there's, you release a lot more uh, flavor and a lot more aroma by, by using the mortar and pestle than you do with the food processor. So the food processor is faster and it'll work, but um, you, you get like side by side, you get a lot more flavor out of a mortar and pestle than you do out of using a food processor. Okay. I, um, I... I tried using a blender and then I put it in the mortar and pestle because it wasn't really picking up. But um, since you said it's more flavorful, I'm just gonna work my muscles then. All right. <laughs> I, uh, you know, I was seeing a lot of models on Instagram do like think photo shoots for their laptop. Um, how has you know COVID hit in the modeling industry, and have you done any any work? At all? Um, I mean, I feel like it's gonna it's gonna make uh it's definitely more important to be virtual. So yeah, people are doing virtual shoots like. We're here right now connecting virtually, um, you know, people are doing events on IG Live and all that kind of stuff. So I feel like this time is, I mean, thanks to have the internet and we're able to still be able to keep home and be safe. So I, I think, like, even when the lockdown's over, there's still going to be a sense of that that's going to go on for 100% safe. Um, and I don't know, 
we'll see. Like, we'll see, you know, the fashion industry and other industries as well will kind of, like, embrace this new um, way of working, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I mean, Olivia, too, you, you and Olivia are both, you know, like, badass entrepreneurs. Um, have you been able to work from home or like what have you guys been doing um in terms of like entrepreneurship i guess you know with your podcast as well um oh, you know? luckily with my work at smosh um they sent us like tripods and cameras and lighting and equipment so we're able to shoot some sketches from home um obviously it's hard because like you know, we'll have a scene where I'm talking to someone, but then it's someone at their own house talking back to me. So it's like cutting in between that. Um, and obviously, you know, having that human connection, especially in comedy, you kind of fuel that with a partner, someone in the scene with you. And it's a little um, And as far as my podcast goes, um, now that everyone is, you know, at home, a lot of people are willing to do the podcast because it's so easy and we do it over Zoom and it's and it's easier, but at the same time, it's just lacking that human connection. I've had people on my podcast that I've never met before and I would love to like, you know, meet them and hug them and talk to them, you know, physically. Um, but at the same time, I think it's a really great moment to appreciate the things that, you know, you have, you know, like I have my tripod, I have my camera, I have my mic all those things are so easy and accessible to me right now. And I, I, I appreciate the, the, the circumstances and the situation and looking at it with a glass half full and empty. Yeah, totally. I, I mean, I don't know what we would have done if this happened, you know, years ago when technology was not as advanced. Yeah. We were really difficult. Like we can still connect like even in other parts of the country, other parts of the city. So. At least we're kind of all going through similar circumstances. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of happy we have this thing that we can talk about, the shared experience, and we can like bond over that and deal with it together. Yeah, 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 totally. There's a there's a, there's a, there's a drive by birthday party going on outside the house right now, which is what the dogs are barking at. There's like a bunch of cars beeping. So I think there's a the kid across the street is having a drive by birthday. That's cute. I think it's very good. Okay, I, I think it's really cute when they do that. <laughs> um, oh, so now, if you have that all that stuff, by the way, um, now you want to add peanuts to that. So about a quarter cup of roasted peanuts, um, and you can pound, start pounding those in as well. I'm gonna get, you know, you can go as fine or as, as fine or as chunky as you want. You don't really have to reduce to like a total taste, you know. Like having a little texture in there is fine. Um, and then, just so, just so you guys know how it's going to go from here so we can keep talking, once you have your peanuts pounded in, um, then you just want to take your herbs. So I have mint, cilantro, and basil. Um, and you want to take your herbs and start adding, adding them in like a small handful at a time. Um, and, uh, you know, if your mortar and pestle gets too full, you can, take, you can scoop some out into, um, into a bowl inside and just keep going and then start adding more. Um, and if you don't have a mortar and pestle, then... Um, you can just finely chop all these herbs, and then we'll stick them into a uh, we'll stick them into the blender. Quarantine and lockdown has been. I feel like we've all been trying to be really creative in ways to get our food. You know, like making things at home or going to wherever. So I actually was able to find. Um, my friend has a farm, and I was able to get fresh um, Thai basil. Oh my god! So, yeah, I got so lucky. <laughs> have flowers? I didn't yeah. even know that. Yeah, basil. Basil when it, when it, it, it yeah. is actually in season. I thought I, I wasn't sure it was, but so. beautiful. That's so basil awesome. Basil has really pretty flowers, and the, and the flowers taste like basil too. Oh, no way. If you can eat them, then. Yeah. Yeah, you can totally eat them. Yeah, usually I, if, I get, if I have some with flowers on it, I'll, I'll pick up the flowers and save them for garnish. Because they look so pretty. I'll do that, then. 
Should I add in the mint or I'm not adding in the mint yet? Yeah, you can do you can do all the herbs. Oh, okay. Way. Yeah, yeah. I actually found my Thai basil on Postmates. I looked up Thai basil and a bunch of uh, Thai restaurants and Vietnamese restaurants were selling that. Wow. That's Wait, awesome. Karen, you, you ordered you ordered pho and just took all the garnish from it, right? Is that what you did? No, I think that was Adrian that was Oh, is that Adrian? Yeah, as well. So I have a lot of tart type being filled now. That's so smart, though. Yeah. Like yeah, Thai basil is great. You know, so Thai basil has a kind of more licorice sort of anise flavor to it. Whereas, you know, Italian basil is a little bit sort of sweeter. Um, but, but either one is going to work fine. Or neither, you know, if you just have, if you just have cilantro and mint, that's also fine. Chef Kenji, where do you shop for your ingredients? Do you go to the local market or? Yeah, you know, I found, especially since um, shelter in place, like the smaller markets are, I find them to be safer to go to than like, like the big supermarkets or like, or like Target, you know, like, like the big supermarkets are, first of all, like they're generally busier, but the thing is like, they all have, you know, whether you have a big market or a small market, everyone goes in through the same door. And so the big supermarkets, they have like hundreds of people going in through the same doorway in and out all the time. And so there's this like kind of choke point where you just like, you, you just end up coming into contact with more people and like more things that people have read on and popped on than at the smaller markets. I mean, I also just like going to smaller markets because I find, well, first of all, I like to support the local, the smaller businesses. Um, but I find they've also had generally better selection um, through all this because, especially at the beginning, like when people were hoarding, you know, like they would all go to like, like Target or, or the Safeway or whatever, whatever the big the big shopping stores are, um, and then load up and everything. And so the, all the shelves are empty. But like the little Latin market, and then especially the Asian market, like the the Chinese market has been um, really well stocked. I mean, I'm, I'm partially probably because people, especially early on, like people were scared of buying imported Chinese ingredients. Um, although, although as we know, you know there is no danger um, as far as Virus related danger from import, you know, from Asian ingredients. Um, yeah, no, I I've read so many articles and uh, so many videos on the hate crimes happening, um, you know, uh, towards the Asian community. And I think one of them is, uh, you know, not going to these Asian markets or Asian restaurants. Um, it, it makes a huge impact, um, you know, in terms of whether a business can stay open or not because they're losing so many customers. You know, it's, it's ironic because, you know, imported ingredients, so, so you know, the, the virus doesn't, doesn't live on surfaces for too long. Um, you know, on, on hard surfaces, it can live for a few days. Um, on, on more organic and porous surfaces like cardboard and food, um, a day or two at most. Um, and so imported ingredients that are spending like probably at least a few weeks in shipping containers, um, they're like almost certain to have no virus on them at all. Like, you know, maybe there's a chance that they could get contaminated once they're at the store by a worker coughing on them, for instance, something like that. But um, it's actually safer to get imported ingredients than it is to get your local ingredients because they've been sitting um, basically in self-quarantine in their shipping containers for a few weeks. Um, and so there's no real, real chance that there's any virus left on those at all, but people still, um, well, a lot of people know better, but, but there are still some people who seem to be avoiding um, Asian restaurants and Asian and imported Asian ingredients, which is a shame, I think. But this means more for, more for me. Yes, um, that, that's a good piece of information. You guys shop local, shop Asian. It's safe, you yes. heard it here. Um, I know that at the beginning of quarantine, I went to the Asian markets and they were fully stocked on toilet paper, so. Yeah. I feel like it might even be safe. By the way, this is, this is how you should sort of be looking like that. You don't really have to go minor than that. Um, yeah, that looks great. I mean, that looks like really. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So you, if you have all your stuff in the blender, that's fine. Um, so once once you get down to this point where you have like a sort of rough paste, um, now we're gonna add our um, our last few ingredients. So that's um, little sugar. So I'm using I'm using. This Canela, like this brown, like raw sugar, but you can do um, you can do white sugar. Um, I can't remember how much. What, how much is, did I say on there? I said one tablespoon of sugar. So yeah, about a tablespoon of sugar. 
I'm a, I guess I don't really follow the recipe when I'm actually doing it. Um, tablespoon of sugar, and then we got our fish sauce. So a couple tablespoons of fish sauce. And then um, a few tablespoons of, uh, I'm using grapeseed oil. You can use you know, grapeseed, vegetable canola, any kind of neutral oil is fine. Um, and then, and then you just want to kind of pound that all in there. Um, so in your blender, yeah, you can just you can just put this all in your blender. Don't 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 run the blender yet. But if you're in a mortar and pestle, what you want to do is kind of a, a circular motion like this, and that's going to help sort of incorporate everything in there. How much oil is it again? Is it again? Say again. One tablespoon or two tablespoons of oil. Uh, three tablespoons. Okay. Yeah, so it should be three, like about three, two, one. Oil, fish sauce to sugar. Throughout yeah. the recipe, I substituted uh, all of the oils with extra virgin olive oil. Was that okay? That's that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fine. You have a thing that tastes like olive oil now, which is fine. Olive oil, olive oil tastes good. Does salt go into this picture too? Say again. Into this uh, I wouldn't add any extra salt right now, just because um, you know the fish sauce. Fish sauce is pretty salty, so I would leave the salt out, and then we'll we'll taste it at the end. And if you need more salt at the end, you can add more fish sauce or more regular salt. Um, so it should be turning into like a sort of nice creamy emulsion now. Like once once you have all those things in like that, you can see it. Um, and at this point, you can also taste it a little bit and see if. Um, yeah, it should, it should taste like a sort of balance of salty and sweet and spicy. Um, I also, I forgot to say this, but you don't, and you, you don't have to do it, but I left a few of the raw, the, the, the whole herbs on the side, because I'm just going to toss them with the noodles at the end as well. What is oil again? Is it? What's that name? How much pixie oil do we have to add? Uh, about three tablespoons. Wow, it tastes so good. Does it? Good. I right? use this with everything. Can I put it over okay. rice too? This is so good. Well, this on rice sounds really good. Or in a sandwich, like a spread. Oh my mm. god. Yeah, this would work great also as a as a marinade for for grilled tofu or, or meat or like chicken or tofu or vegetables. Just rub it on there and put it on the grill. Um, and so once we have that, um, we want to bring our, you guys have water boiling already or no? Not yet. I did boil it earlier, um, but should we boil it again? Yeah, yeah, I just want to have it boiling and then we'll, because the only thing left to do is cook in the, the shrimp and beans and noodles. We're done. Can I, um, run this or should I wait? Say again? Can you run this? Oh, um, I would wait. So yeah, you're, if you, yours, I would wait because what we'll do is well, once you cook, yeah, once you cook everything, we'll add a little water so that it moves around a little better in the blender. Yeah. Jeff Kenji, a friend yeah. of mine wanted me to ask you how you have. I mean, you must have excellent work ethic because you have to, you know juggle so many things at once. You're like a New York Times bestseller, best-selling author. Uh, you have your own YouTube channel. Um, you have a daughter. How do you do it all? <laughs> um, I mean, my secret is I only, I only take projects that I think are going to be fun. And then and if it's fun for me, then I just feel like doing it and I just do it. You know, like, I, I, I mean, ever since like high school, I've had trouble applying myself to work that I don't really love, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, which I think a lot of people do. So, and basically, like every career choice I've made has been to, to be in the direction of fewer bosses. And you know, so like now I don't have any bosses, which is great. You know, but so like fewer people telling me what to do, so that I can figure out what I do. And 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 also, you know, for me, a lot of it is just not thinking about whether it's going to advance my career sort of financially. Like I I I, I figure if. If I'm doing something I love, I'm going to be passionate about it, um, and the quality of the work is going to be better. And then, if the quality of the work is better, then more people are going to like it, and you know, eventually the career and the 
and, and getting paid for it will follow. And that's that seemed to work out so far. So yeah, so really it's like I, I just I only work on things that I enjoy doing, which is why you know, which is why this YouTube thing has been working so far because it's basically I just get to cook. Um, and I don't really have to do much other than stick a camera on my head and edit some stuff. Um, so, so that's been fun. Um, writing books is fun. Um, yeah, I, I wrote a, last year. I wrote a children's book, um, which is actually, it's coming out this September. Um, so that's, that that was a great part, of, a really fun project. Um, and I, I want to do more children's books. Now. Did you get to um, sort of work with your daughter? Kind of bounce back ideas with her. Yes, we tell stories to each other in the car and on our walks. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely get a lot of ideas. I mean, because kids have like crazy, crazy imaginations, um, and and the way they, yeah, the way they make connections with the world is just, um, you know, they have a very different filter than adults do. Well, and, and a lot of times they don't have that filter, so that, and they have fewer sort of data points. So it's like, you know, it's like in your in your head when you think about when you think about something, it's like, all right, this is similar to that. You, you put it into a bucket with other things. Like, all right, this is similar to that, and you can make metaphors and similes in your head. But they're usually very specific because you have so much information in your head. Whereas, like, a kid, you know, it's like you might have 100 things in your kid, and the kid only has, the kid only has five things in their head. And so the connections that they make between them are, like, way more obscure than the connections adults would make. And I always find that really sort of hilarious. Um, and I think that's sort of the key to making a good kid's book is to, um, yeah, put yourself in the head of a kid and, and think, about, think about that, think about things in, like, Really simplified and it's simplified ways, um, and and well, and also yeah, having a daughter and being able to talk to her and bounce ideas off her, um, and seeing what she thinks is funny um, has really helped with it as far as writing kids' books. Yeah, um, what you said is so interesting because uh, one of the things that we learn in acting class is that children have no filters, like you said. Yeah. And, um, we as adults learn to put on more of a mask, more of a filter, and. What you yes. want to see on camera is real life and uh, your genuine, honest reaction to things. So we, we're working to like peel off the layers, right? Um, right, Mickey. I'm not sure if like you've had the same kind of training, but that's kind of been one of the things that I've been trying to work on. And my water is boiling, Mickey. All right. So yeah, once your water is boiling, is that your water boiling? Yes. Yeah. yeah? All right. So once your water is boiling, you can put in your shrimp or your tofu um, and your and your beans. And we're just going to let those boil for about like a minute. I mean, then, and then you want to have like a slotted spoon, or um, I have this like little spider, but you you want like a slotted spoon, something to be able to take those out once once they're done. Do any of you have, do any, any of you guys have, have kids? I don't. Does anyone else? I have my dog. Yeah. Yeah, the real trick with shrimp is that you, you don't want to overcook them because they go from like perfect to rubbery real fast. Um, so you, know, you can like fish fish a couple of them, just kind of poke them, and as soon as they feel firm, like there's no mushiness left in the center, um, they're basically done. Um, so my, mine are all done right now. And then you can just take them out and put them into a mixing bowl along with beans. Big bowl for everything, or should I? Yeah, yeah, you can toss everything right in the right in the serving bowl if you want. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, right in the serving because we're gonna mix it later. It doesn't matter. Say that again. Sorry, there's a little glitch, but okay. Oh no, unstable bowl. Internet. You're all good right now. I'm all good. Okay. All right. um, and then, 
Yeah. Is everyone, uh, everyone's beans and tofu and shrimp out of the water yet? Yeah, I'll do that. But you can continue. Okay. I'll do that real quickly. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, as soon as that's out and the water comes back to boil, you can put your noodles in. Um, so I'm using, I'm using these fresh Chinese wheat noodles, which are just going to cook in like a minute or so. Um, if you have dry noodles, um, they'll probably take a little bit longer. Um, but dry Chinese noodles should only take a couple minutes. Um, if you have sort of Western-style pasta, um, that you got to follow the box direction. So that'll probably take more like eight or nine minutes. But um, yeah, I, I have these fresh noodles, so they're only going to take like a minute. Oh, I forgot to mention, this water should be sort of lightly salted. Um, if it's not, it doesn't really matter. But um, if you can go back in time and do it, then do it. I'm using these. These are fine. Yeah. Those should probably, I would guess those would only take two or three minutes, right? I don't know, does it say in the bag? It says four minutes. Okay, yeah, four minutes, sure. Mm -hmm. You wanna move your noodles around a little bit to make sure they're not sticking. Um, and once they're done, you can either drain them like in a colander or take them out with like a pair of tongs, but whatever you do, you, you want to reserve um, like a cup or so of the liquid that they cooked in. Um, so you can just take like a, uh, you can just take like a mug and just kind of dip in there and, and take, you know, take a little bit of the liquid out, like half of a, half of a coffee cup full or so, it's plenty. Oh, so mine is going to take a little bit longer. That's all right. It gives us time to talk. Okay. Mine is going to take a while because I have only spaghetti. All right. Cool, cool. Yeah, I have like quinoa spaghetti, so. It's going to take like 15 minutes. Ah, it's overflowing. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. We can all wait. So you know what? That, that's perfect because mine will be ready first so I can show you what it looks like. And then I think, um, um, then I think parents will be ready. And then maybe, um, then who, who will be after that? But I, I think we'll be able to go in succession and we'll be one at a time and then we can all show each other our work. Awesome. Um, Mickey, I know, sorry, do you have to go? You can go. No? I have like two, two, three more minutes on my, 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 uh, low main. All right, the shot clock's on. Um, I wanted to ask, so since you've been in the industry for a really long time, you are an actor, you sing, you can dance, um, would you say, like, if you had to choose one out of the three, what is your most passionate or what would you choose? Um, I would, it's changed throughout the years. Yeah, because I started in the industry for almost 20 years. Well, you were on Zoe 101 in 2005, right? Yeah. I did my research. I did my research. <laughs> yes. Um, I would honestly say, though, I think acting has kind of always been my number one. Um, just because I love I love watching film and TV. So the reaction that I feel from what I get from it is so fulfilling. And you know, it's just whatever mood you're in, like you can be fulfilled in that moment. Um, and just, I love that. So as an actor, like I, I love being able to kind of do that for others too. And in whatever way, whether it's one person or, you know, people, like if I can affect them in some way, I feel like my job is is done in that sense, but you know I'm continuously learning and from others and want to do so many other roles too. So, um, but it is it feels most rewarding right now. But you know it'll change. Like I'm I'm writing now as well. I'm, I have two shows I'm developing and um, so we're doing that and that's exciting. So I want to be able to kind of wear all kinds of hats. <laughs> Yeah, um, would you say that the um, casting process or auditioning process maybe changed throughout the years? Um, I, I think lately we've been able to audition for roles that are outside of our race, outside of our ethnicity, you know, outside of our stereotypes. But 
have you seen a change since you've um, been here for so long? Yeah, I mean, I've seen a change on so many different fronts as far as, you know, when I was younger, it was like me and like four or five other girls in the same room all the time. And it was for one role. So it, it felt very competitive. And so a lot of friendships weren't really even made then because it just felt like, oh, there's only one of us that can get this. But even within the Asian community of entertainment, it's changed dramatically with like, more or less recently of just feeling so supported by everyone um and even if you haven't met them like you know them you know like you would <laughs> that's my alarm <laughs> um but even yeah seeing people um from afar and being able to admire them that you know the hustling and doing good work has been amazing but i think the goals wise for sure we're starting to have goals that are grounded and people like us instead of what you know our true stereotypes and the things of what we've grown up to kind of be at least in our generation so it feels really it feels good that things are obviously coming back to just making us seem like humanizing us and like you know like oh that's like a version of my friend or anything yeah i do agree for sure about the uh, community aspect even within the asian actresses i think mickey you were the first or not first, I would not say first, uh, but you were one of the leaders that introduced me to the Asian American Girl Club. We all went uh, to a bar once and that was really nice because I had been feeling a little bit um, lost in terms of uh, community and I didn't feel like I had a lot of friends um, that were Asian actresses. So that was really, really fun. Um, thank you, Mickey. I just messed up and I threw out my pasta water. <laughs> oh no! Can oh. I just add in regular water, Chef Kenji? <laughs> yeah, 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 you should. So so what I did was I transferred my um, noodles to a bowl, to the bowl with all the, um, you know, with the shrimp and the beans, and then I, I added all the, um, all the pesto in. Um, and then you kind of toss it around and you'll see it's gonna get kind of thick and you wanna just basically add, your, add water. Um, oh, if, if you're doing it in the blender, yeah, you can add like a half cup of water in there so just get it going. Um, and then, then uh, yeah, then you toss it and then you taste it for seasoning. Um, I ended up adding some more fish sauce to mine um, because I like fish sauce. But um, yeah, that's about it. Um, these particular noodles, I mean, I've never used this brand of noodles before. They're, they're, they're super covered in starch, so they're a little bit stickier than I would normally like them, but they still taste good. Sorry, Chef Kanji. What? Mm -hmm. Noodles? Do I can I put them in the shrimp or do I put it in the pesto? <laughs> you put them in. <laughs> put them in. Uh, put them in like a serving bowl with the shrimp and the beans or whatever. If you don't have beans, just with the shrimp and then and then add the pesto on top. Yeah. Then just scoop the pesto in there. Um, add like a add like a cup or so of the pasta water. <gasps> I just. <laughs> That's fine. You can just use just use regular water. That's fine. Okay, sorry, I just repeated the same mistake. I should have. No, nope, yeah, no worries, no worries. Uh, It'll still taste good. Pour this in with the noodles and shrimp and ginger, right? I'm, I'm okay to pour this in, right, with the noodles. And yeah, yeah. Pour this in. Um, and I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I put it on the ingredients list, but if you, if you do have like a lime or something like that, um, that works really nice on this too. Anyone else like to like literally get the all the bits of sauce? I don't like wasting any sauce. Hmm. You say you said one whole line? Just squeeze it over. I mean, yeah, just like serve it on the side. You can squeeze it as much or as little as you want. I put in like half a line. Yeah, I guess one whole line for the whole whole bowl for the whole serving. Olivia, yes. so I watched your podcast with the COVID doctor. Oh, I thought that was awesome. It's so informative. Um, what made you want to start podcasts? Because I think you were prominent in the YouTube community before that, right? Yeah. Um, well, 
I just feel like there isn't, when I was growing up, I didn't really have someone to like ever to, to look up to, to hear their journeys. And I would be, you know, on Disney Channel and be just like Hilary Duff. And, you know, she didn't look like me and her, her, her story isn't like mine. And I remember always feeling like I wish there was someone who was like me doing something awesome. And I realized that maybe there are a lot more people like that who maybe not just want to be actors. Maybe they want to be chefs or architects or, you know, and they, they, they want to meet people who have similar interests like theirs. Therefore, I feel like with my, with my platform and my podcast, I can give people that opportunity to not feel like they have to be jaded in a certain way and they can go and explore and do their own thing. Yeah, that's that is why I, I started Fish Cheeks. No, that's awesome. Um, and I think it's super cool that you have such funny videos on YouTube as well. And like, I think, you know, growing up, I think my, one of my first, okay, one of my first YouTube videos was shoes. You know, the, oh my God, shoes. So that, that so that, um, that person, that act, the, that person who made that video actually was our editor at Smosh. What? Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah. And when he, when he started working with us, we're like, oh my God, that's the shoes guy. That's so cool. I want to meet him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think he works as an editor for us anymore, but um, yeah, it was really, really cool. Yeah, no. And is the sh shoes is the one with the song, like the, the bitch and- Yes! Yeah. yeah. Oh my God, shoes, that one? Yes. Uh, that was one of my first YouTube videos also, I think. Um, and then I, I think he came. I think he came and did a live show at, at my college because that that came out when I was like, I think it was actually after I just just after I graduated. But he came and did like a, I think he had like a little shoes tour. Wow! That's funny. Did he come out with his own music? I thought that was just a parody or like a funny little thing that he did. I think he makes his own music. I yeah, think he's yeah. Super talented. And I remember. How are you, how are you I was like, you're like the most normal person. <laughs> also, still needs time. Okay. Well, I added the bean sprouts. That was optional, right? I oh, beans. cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I forgot to put my bean sprouts in. Oh well. Yeah, you can add a handful of bean sprouts. Bean sprouts in there too. That looks beautiful. And did you taste it yet? I tasted it. Awesome. I'm gonna taste it now. Hold on. All right. Adrian, I saw that you're from um, Toronto originally. Yeah, yeah. I have my Toronto mug because we shoot there. Oh, that's so awesome. Yeah. Um, it's a great city. It is. Yeah. I love it there. And you guys have amazing food, by the way. We have really good food. It's very um, multicultural over there. So you have like a bit of everything. And yeah, it's an awesome city. How, how many times have you been there? I've been there, so we shot Suicide Squad there, and then we shot two seasons of The Boys, so, like, a total of a year and a half, but, uh, you know, months divided up. Um, That's a significant amount of time. Yeah, it is. Really well, really well. You guys have amazing, um, blue Caesars. You like that? I mean, it's not for everyone, I guess, but I, I got into it when I was there. Amazing. What is that? Bloody Caesars. It's like a, a Bloody Mary, but their version, right, Adrian? I think so. You know, to be honest, I didn't even realize that was like a Canadian drink until I left, and people would keep mentioning that to me, like you just did. And I was like, oh, I never that. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, because the food is the food is great. Well, when did you go in the winter time or the summertime? We usually go during the summertime, but um, towards the end, it usually gets to be winter. So last time we all got Canada gooses on set, and it started snowing, and it's quick. It's it goes from summer to winter, like bam. So pretty drastic. Yeah. Yeah. My favorite is summers in Toronto. It's like everybody's been at home, cold for 
I don't know, like six months or something. And in the summertime, everyone comes out, everyone's in the park and riding their bikes. It's just like the best. Do you think that, um, you know, when I went to Toronto, I saw so, a really, really, really fantastic Chinatown mm -hmm. um, and a huge Asian population. And so when you started off there, was it, do you think the transition was easier than maybe the States or like, do you have any specific experiences pertaining to uh, being Asian American um, in the workforce in Canada, I guess? Um, I mean, growing up, growing up, like even like my classmates, everyone was so, everyone was from somewhere else. So my point of reference is always like, I'm, we're, we're all Canadian, you know, like we're all different, but we're Canadian, but that's what makes us Canadian. Um, because like we all kind of celebrate each other's um, backgrounds and um, ethnicities. Um, so I feel like that did make it easier for me when I started traveling, kind of being able to um, go to a new country um, and be comfortable and not be kind of like freaked out um, and kind of be able to like dive right into whatever is going on over there. So yeah, I think it was really, it was really nice growing up in Toronto. It's such a nice place to, to like kind of become yourself, you know? <laughs> Um, sorry, I, I just see Mickey going at it. <laughs> um, should we show our dishes? I'm sorry, I was talking too, too much. But oh, I don't think Adrian's done yet, huh? Should we? I, my pasta is basically yeah. It's so good. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Should I try it now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh good, I'm glad I'm glad it's working out. <laughs> oh my god. Is it this good? How is it? It's so good. I gotta try it. This is crazy. <laughs> Mine was wow. just okay. No. That's why it's so spicy. That little chili, Thai chili, is powerful. Oh yeah, those chilies are hot. Those chilies are hot. Yeah. Oh my god, it's so spicy. <laughs> Chef Kenji, how do you, yeah. um, critics judge food? Like, is it big, is it a lot about presentation or because I I can tell when something tastes good, but I don't right. know how to critique it. Uh, how do you how do critics judge food? Well, I mean, I think it, it, I think it, it's really you know a good critic is will judge things based on context, right? Um, so. Um, yeah, you know, in some, in some contexts, like the only thing that matters is if it tastes good. But in other in other contexts, like you know, the the presentation matters, the the atmosphere of a restaurant matters, the um, in, you know, in some cases, like the authenticity matters. Um, in other cases, it doesn't. You know, I, I think it's really just about placing things in context and making sure that um, you know, however you present your food to be, it should be it, it should it should fulfill those those, those requirements. You know, um, so. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, ultimately, when you're cooking at home, uh, honestly, I think, you know, the, the point, what, once you're past sort of basic subsistence, the point of food is really to sort of get people together and enjoy each other's company. And so we can all sit down to a meal, you know, um, uh, you know, there, there's that. And then there's, you know, there's like telling a story and telling a cultural story um, and, um, you know, celebrating a history or a region. Um, so, you know, there, there's many different ways you can judge food, and I don't think any of them are, are right or wrong. Um, um, and I think, you know, if you're cooking at home, if you've cooked something and you've, and you've got your friends to come over or your family to come and sit down, then, like, you've already won, you know? It's like you, you're already sitting there, so really, who really cares? Like, you, you get three chances to cook every day. Well, at least most of us do. You know, you get three chances to cook every day, so if your food isn't perfect one time, then, like, it'll be better the next time, so who cares? You know, just, I think... Um, you, you should dwell less on whether your food is perfect and more on being present for, um, you know, for the meals and being present with the people who you're, who you're eating with. That's yeah. my philosophy. Yeah. I, um, I, I, yeah. I have no other thing to say. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yeah. I don't know if it's an Asian thing, but I don't know how to cook for one person. Oh, yeah. Me too. <laughs> I, cook, I make a lot of, I mean, like, this is a huge goal. So I've been like, I don't want to obviously have left 
leftovers go to waste. Even though I will eat my leftovers. So I've been having to distribute like, this my friends. I've been like walking off the system. So I'm like, at least you know they can still eat my food. <laughs> but also because I don't know how to cook for one person. So I don't know if that's just an Asian thing or I mean it's so hard. But <laughs> No, I totally agree. I definitely um, cook way too much, and I usually just end up eating it, but um, I have some stocked up things in the fridge. Also, I think baked goodies, uh, trading it with my friends, that's been a thing during this quarantine. It's like a hug, but yeah. <laughs> I you love know, eating people. We found that, um, so I, I have a friend who runs a cookie dough company who found himself you know, sitting on cases and cases of cookie dough that he couldn't really sell because we, he normally sells it to restaurants. Um, so he, he donated it all to us and we've been dropping off cookies with all of our OTP meal deliveries. Um, and that has been like, has had such an amazing re reception. You know, it's like, cause it's like you don't need cookies for a meal. So when you do get cookies, it makes you feel like kind of extra special, you know, it's like a little special treat. Um, and um, yeah, like people, people, people expect to get like, oh, okay, I got my nourishing meal. But then they get like a little cookie on top of that and then make some, you know, cookies make people feel, um, it's just like such a, a thoughtful thing, I think, you know, like it makes, it makes people like understand, oh, you, you care about them enough to give them like a little, little special treat. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I, I love dessert. It's just a little sprinkle on the top. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, you got the lime in there too? Good. Have a little taste. I forgot the lime, actually. It's so good. I can't stop eating. <laughs> oh, it's so good. This has turned into a mukbang video. <laughs> also, I love those, by the way. I keep Me watching too. ASMR, mukbang, everything. <laughs> I get a, I get mixed. So I when I shoot with this GoPro on my head, like the, the microphone's... Yeah, it's like on my forehead, so you can hear me like breathing and you can hear me chewing and stuff. Um, and so some people seem to be okay. You know, some people like like it, you know, like I think the ASMR people like that. Um, but then some people get like really grossed out by, they, they're like, oh, we can watch the video up until like the last 10 seconds of when I start chewing. Um, um, so yeah, there, there's like really diverse reactions to ASMR type noises. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. How is it? Adrian, really good. Sorry, I wasn't talking because it was like no. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Um, now, okay. So to wrap us up, um, a big shout out to the OTP team. Thank you for producing this event. Um, and more so for all of the incredible and impactful work you do for our frontline communities. It's hard to believe that uh, OTP was founded in mid-March, just a few weeks ago. And to date, they've raised $5.3 million, Woo! Um, which in turn will serve 530,000 meals and provide over 2.6 million in immediate economic relief to restaurant workers. Uh, their work is not over yet though. So if you can, we would greatly, greatly appreciate it. If you can donate, link is down below. Um, and all donations, 100% of it will be going to feed our frontline healthcare heroes. So uh, this is our, I, th I guess, goodbye. But um, a big thank you to Chef Kenji, Adrian, Olivia, and Nikki for joining us tonight. Um, do you guys have like a last couple words? Um, we can start with Mickey. Um, uh, thank you, OTP, for including me today. This was so much fun, and this is amazing, Chef Kenji. So thank you. Um, I'm happy that obviously all of us get to connect this way too through food and just talk about. Um, so many things that are obviously going on right now, but yes, if you can donate just a little bit, I know there's so many different causes and things that are going on in the world and in the country, but you know, hopefully we can keep uniting and support one another um, and keep helping our, our frontline healthcare workers. Thank you, Mickey. Olivia? I just wanted to say thank you guys for cooking with me. Thank you, Chef. Thank you off their plate. You guys are doing some amazing, amazing work. And I'm so, so proud to be a part of this community. And um, a little donation goes 
a long way. And, you know, the littlest donation can make the biggest impact in someone's life. So it really, really does matter. And thank you guys so much for watching and joining us. <clears throat> in one of the coolest things I've done in quarantine. So thank you guys for giving me this opportunity. Um, yeah, just this was just pure joy. So thank you guys. Awesome. Um, Adrian? Thank you off their plate for including me as well. It was so great to connect with you ladies and chef and learn this new dish. And I'm so thankful that there's organizations like Off Their Plate that can give back to the community, support small businesses, and support those on the front line that are keeping us healthy and safe. So yes, every little bit counts and I'll be donating as well. Thank you. Chef Kenji? Um, yeah, I, I, well, it was very nice to meet all of you, and this, this makes me, this makes me wish, wish I could have more frequent dinner parties again. Um, no, this has, been, this has been a lot of fun, and, and working with Author Plates, um, I mean, it's been um, an honor and, and super humbling just to see um, the amount of passion that goes into it from all sides, both from the, the frontline healthcare workers and from the chefs um, and from the cooks who are who are cooking all the food um, and the people making the donations. Uh, it's, it's been, honestly, you know, all of this whole situation is terrible, but, but working with Author Place has given me really, like a really, it's been really a bright light, like a really hope, you know, it really, <laughs> it's nice to see so many people doing good and legitimately caring and people wanting to help each other um, when there are so many terrible things going on in the world right now. Um, and to be able to be part of that um, and in, in whatever small capacity has been um, extraordinary um, and, and humbling and wonderful. Um, and so I hope to continue to be able to work with them. Um, uh, you know, because even after even after things start to go back to normal, there are still going to be people who need food. Um, and you know, this experience has shown me that um, you know, doing good for your community is doing doing good for your, for your community. Not only helps not only helps the community, but it also helps you as a person and helps your business. Um, it's just the power of doing good. Like doing good is good all around for everyone. Um, yeah. So thank you. Um, and I, I also just wanted to thank you guys. Uh, when I first pitched this idea to OTP, um, I, do, I thought it was just going to be me. And so I, I'm so blown away that we got such oh, sorry, such talented people um, to join. And um, this was a lot of work, you know, preparing everything, buying everything. So thank you. Um, and thank you for teaching us how to cook today. Thank you, OTP. Um, remember to donate. And uh, all right. Good. Bye. How do I do this, Olivia? <laughs> oh, no. A big Bye. shout out to Karen. Thank you for moderating and hosting this. You're wonderful. Thank you, Olivia. <laughs> <Bye. laughs>